Hello everybody, Argus here. Thanks for tuning in. Today I'm showing off my character build, which is a cleric using the Solace Prayer Tree. In comparable games, I go the Pure Caster route. Unfortunately, there is no Pure Caster in Lords of the Fallen. However, this build is as close as you can get and very enjoyable to play with if you love magic. I'm starting with a review of the Faith weapons and which ones I prefer. They're mostly hammers which are fairly weak compared to the strength weapons, but they get the job done and pair nicely with the gauntlet which I rely on heavily. You should focus on weapons that have a faith scale and sockets, preferably both. Weapons that scale will do greater damage as your faith increases. This means you can dump attribute points in faith and the weapon's damage will grow with your character. Up first we have the hammer stair, which is indisputably the best faith weapon in the entire game. Plus, it looks awesome. It has a faith scale of 7% and a socket. The reason sockets are so important is because if you throw a luck rune in the weapon, it increases the faith scale. So I put a flawless luck rune in and increased the faith scale to 11%, which added 109 damage to the weapon, totaling 294 damage. It has magic damage as well, which comes in handy when fighting the spirits, and we'll talk about them a little later in this video. As you can see from the gameplay, Stare does some solid damage. 422 against the first ward in new game, and 360 against the judge. Regardless of the weapon or even build, it is crucial to add luck runes to weapons for that scale increase. The only bad part about Stair, you get it right before the final boss. So I'm going to go over the weapons that I use to carry me to this point. Shortly you're going to see the Hammer Lightning, which you get from defeating the Annihilator. I only use this for the elemental damage when fighting the spirits. The spirits are the ghost looking enemies that can only be damaged by magic and this hammer works great on them. Next we have Clawfinger, which is a great axe, not a hammer. Regardless of its type, I love this weapon and it carried me through the game. I used Clawfinger up until I got the hammer fly. It has a 10% faith scale, which is the highest you can get without using a luck rune. Unfortunately, no sockets, but 10%, you do not really need one. You get this weapon fairly early in the game after defeating the Worshipper, which is a third boss. Make sure you get the special version by having the Worshipper kill two of its enemies it summons. As you can see, the special version has a magic spike protruding through the ground when you use a heavy attack, and this comes in handy. Another benefit is it does not require as much energy to swing, so you can get some good hits in. Five to six hits compared to about three to four with stare. Not that you'll get the chance to hit an enemy that many times before it bashes you into the ground. So if you do a running attack, you'll have enough energy to continue swinging. Even though Stair uses greater energy, its damage output is far greater, so it is definitely worth using. Fly is another awesome faith weapon. Pretty much replace Clawfinger for me. It is available after you defeat the Guardian. It is in the dimensional portal near the Eternal Flame. It has a socket, so once you get a luck rune inserted, its damage will skyrocket. It has magic damage as well, so it'll take out those spirits no problem. I forgot to mention this, but Stare also has magic damage. Energy-wise, it has less than Stare, but you get about the same amount of swings. It does not look as cool as Stare, though. Next, we have Hairloom and it is only worth using when you get the upgraded version. It can be upgraded in the catacombs. There is no faith scale or socket, so the weapon is very limited. Heirloom is best used to def defeat the spirit enemies because it deals that magical damage. For a while, I would use Clawfinger and then switch to Heirloom whenever I encountered a spirit. Yeah, its original version is fairly weak, so make sure you upgrade it. The next weapon I totally overlooked, and that is Cleric. I never used it, but it is not a bad hammer at all. It is socketed so you can get a 4% faith scale with a luck rune. Getting it is the best part. When fighting the commander, you need to place the Shard of Heroes in the Cleric statue. If you ever use this hammer for, let me know how you like it in the comments. Even though it is a staff and underpowered compared to other weapons, I love the Kamar. First, it looks awesome. Second, speed kills. I am new to the Lords of the Fallen type games when you need to show patience or else you'll get destroyed. When fighting the shield masters and knights, I could never get a hit in because they would hide behind their shield. The Kamar is the only weapon fast enough for me to sneak in a hit. I use this staff for a good chunk of the game and it's a fun weapon and I'll bust it out every so often. 
Final say with weapons is use claw finger or cleric until you get fly and eventually stare. Make sure any weapon with a socket has a luck rune. If you are fighting a spirit, use a weapon that deals magic damage like the hair loom or lightning. If you struggle getting hits on enemies or feel like you are attacking too slow, use the Kamar. Rogues and hounds are quick foes and the Kamar can keep up with them. I use the gauntlet so I do not have a shield equipped. I only use projectile. If you are fortunate enough to get a flawless power rune, use it. It is the highest damage out of any other rune. If not, use a fire or poison rune. It will do damage over time. If you have additional luck runes, they are good in the gauntlet as well. The gauntlet is best used on shielded enemies or to spam when you are sick of fighting. I use a gauntlet to pepper bosses as I am waiting for an opening. My build focuses on medium armor. I like to keep my weight down so I can roll away from attack since I do not use a shield. I kept upgrade, upgrading armor as I found it in the game. By the end, I use effect for my chest and last trader for everything else. There are set bonuses for using the same armor, but they didn't seem to work. For example, last trader should increase spell damage by 30%, but I did not notice. As far as runes go in armor, just plug in whatever you have. I really didn't have a strategy for this. I would just put different runes in to get different bonuses. If I know I'm fighting a fire boss, I'll make sure to put a fire rune in. As far as trinkets go, I use faithful discipline, faithful discipline because it greatly increases the speed magic regains at. I only upgraded three attributes the entire game, vitality, faith, and endurance. I would not go any higher than 17 on vitality. I wanted to keep it around 15, but I kept dying. An enemy or boss would get one hit and pretty much deplete my health. I would panic and they would hit me again before I could heal and dead. At 17, this does not happen. I ran my endurance around 17 for about 80% of the game. Once I unlocked Flying Stare, I could only swing them once or twice before my energy was gone. At 20, I could swing and use a running attack to do massive damage. If you prefer more of a brawler approach, you could go higher. Everything else goes into faith. This will help your weapons do more damage because of faith scaling. Unfortunately, faith does not increase gauntlet damage. But if you spam the gauntlet, you need a high faith so you do not run out of magic. Once I got over 35, I do not think I ever ran out of magic. I could cast spells and still have enough for my gauntlet. I am just starting a new game and plan on putting everything into faith to increase my weapon. Next we are going to look at some footage of these spells that I like to use. At the start of the game I unlock Solace and then a new game I unlock Deception. This is a neat little glitch. I was in the dimensional portal and I knew that once I came out the enemies were going to regenerate. So I cast Shelter, came out of the portal and I didn't have the animation around me, but the spell is still working. The best spell is hands down Shelter, and that's what you're seeing right now. Get it to level 3 as fast as you can. Shelter regenerates your health, increases your defense, and reflects any damage you receive back on the enemy. So if you look here, I'm getting hit for roughly 9 to 10 damage, and I'm reflecting 10 to 12 back on him. So I'm reflecting more than he's hitting me for. And we'll try it out with some infected enemies. Next. So getting hit for three. And I'm doing three back. Roughly that. It does all of this while regenerating your health. Shelter does have one weakness. It takes a long time to cast. And if you're in the casting phase and you get hit, it doesn't work. So I found myself fighting a boss or being swarmed by enemies where I'll try to get shelter off and I'll get hit and it won't work and then I wind up dying. So if you're in a situation where you're fighting a boss or many enemies, just pop a potion, it's going to be easier. Next we're going to take a look at punishment. It gives you higher defense and reflection damage than shelter, but it doesn't heal you. So I really prefer shelter. So up against infected, 
I'm going to hit it for roughly 5-6 damage, and I reflect 5-6 back on him. So Shelter does everything that Punishment does, but it has a bonus of regenerating your health, so I really never use Punishment. I just stick with Shelter. As we're searching for our next enemy, I want to talk about how the Gauntlet and the weapons complement each other so nicely. The Gauntlet, that's like your pure caster weapon. It shoots magic from afar, and with a flawless luck rune, it can max out at about 250. And then for close combat, you have Stare, which can do anywhere between 220 to over 300 damage. So both of them work well. You have a long range option, but then if you're close range, you have your weapons there, and it is fun just bashing enemies. The next spell we're going to test is Daze, and this slows, enemy down, slows enemies down, which is useful if you can't land a hit or if you just need to escape quick. As you can see there, the enemy needs to be close to it or else it's not going to work. So there you go, nice slow motion axe. It doesn't last that long, so you have to be careful so you don't take an axe to the face like I just did there. I'm going to try Shift to get away from him, and in this video it doesn't work. Now what shift is supposed to do is make you invisible to enemies and supposedly if you attack an enemy when in shift it should increase your damage. I have used shift in other gameplay I don't have recorded and it did work. You're totally invisible to enemies. I haven't really tested the increased damage when you leave. We are going to now use Stab on this enemy, which I am loving this spell. It sends a fiery clone of Harkin to smash enemies. And there you go. It's like the Gauntlet Blast that keeps on hitting, and best of all, it distracts the enemies. Mimic is the last one I'm going to show you, and it creates a clone of Harkin and doubles any damage you do. This does not include the Gauntlet, so if you have Mimic activate and shoot the Gauntlet, it is not going to double the damage. So I'll try it on some infected here. It doesn't last too long and it is a little difficult to see so I misjudged my hit right here. I thought it was a lot closer so if you're using it just be careful of that. But yeah, totally doubles your damage. The only spells that I'm not showing are the prayer spells and they create a clone of Harkin that can distract enemies. In the Solace Tree, if you stand close enough to the Clone of Harkin, it will regenerate your magic. In the Deception, it will regenerate your energy. And in the Brawling Magic Tree, it will regenerate your health. So, useful there. Here are my final stats. I got this game free with PlayStation Plus. I let it sit for about a year and finally decided to play. And I'm really glad I did. I'm a huge fan and I'm loving it. I find the game challenging and exciting. I'm looking forward to playing through your new game. Thank you so much for checking out this video. If you have any questions, please leave a comment, and I will see you all next time. Thanks again.